and welcome to Swiss Speaks. Today is Wednesday. It's the last Wednesday in April, I think. Yes, it is. And this is episode 219. Oh my gosh, how are you? Oh my gosh, I'm so rosy today. Hmm. A little nervous, apparently. Hmm. Oh well. I'm Amy Beth, also known as the Fat Squirrel on Ravelry and the Fat SQRRL on Instagram. Um, first off, apologies if you can hear a bit of a ruckus in the background. I'm not sure if you will or not. Uh, but the neighbor across the street is replacing shingles on their roof. Well, they're not replacing it. Workers are replacing it. Um, so if you hear some oddness, that's what it is. I don't know if the mic will pick it up, but I don't want you to be like, like me when I got home from going to the groceries this morning, going, what is that sound? What's happening? So that's what's going on. I have big brand coffee in a cup because I went to the grocery, y'all. Sometimes you need a treat. What is happening over here? No, it's over here. Mm, I have a random curl thing happening. That's festive. <laughs> Homemade haircuts. <laughs> so much this week's. Right? I don't know about you, but while spring is being a little hesitant on her weather business, my brain is in full on spring mode. Like there are so many seedlings in my brain waiting to explode and give you all terrible allergies. Do you feel the allergies? Those are not from the weather spring. Those are from my seedling ideas. I'm sorry. I can't help it. Really though, I've been sewing because we're getting ready for needles up at Maryland Sheep and Wool. Hope you're gonna come see me if you're not I understand but I totally hope you're gonna come see me um needles up is the Friday before Maryland sheep and wool um and it's in the town of Columbia which is the kind of like the biggest major town close to West Friendship where the festival is so it's gonna be there you can find more out information at needlesup.com okay but let's just discuss I'm gonna make such a giant soap border from tuft woolens it's out of But anyway, so I've been having to do a lot of having, I've been doing a lot of sewing, but I must confess I've been plagued by these seedling ideas. It feels like I cannot get enough real work done because my brain is just firing a million pus pistons all the time. And so I'm constantly at the end of the day like, is this all I got done? My schedule is going to be so off. Right? I don't know. It's not helpful. <laughs> but I do think this happens to me every spring, if I'm not mistaken. I think I get really manic every spring where I'm just like, I need to do everything except the things that make me dollars. In fact, only the things that cost me dollars. Are you in that boat with me? It's a nice boat, y'all. I mean, it's going nowhere fast, but <laughs> we're going to have a fun time. Now I'm like thinking of like all those boat rides where you're like placidly going through the, and like ours would just like go off the rails, a la Willy Wonka style. It's crazy y'all. So I've been really plagued with like this intense like creativity and just wanting to do so many things and just trying to get my mind to focus and settle on the things that I do really need to do. And I know that I'm going to have a few days off after Maryland Sheep and Wool to play and do what I want to do. So why can't I just settle down? Ah, whatever. It's life. <laughs> so, that being said, the shenanigans of this week are all about sewing. Right. First off, I want to say apologies to all the Patreon supporters who, who support at the $15 or more a month level. Oh my gosh. Y'all just take a second to send thank yous in your brains. Right? Like, you know, when you're walking public broadcasting and it says thanks to viewers like you, if you're like one of the viewers like me, actually, this is the first time we've ever contributed to public broadcasting. I felt like such an adult when I made the payment. This is it, people. I'm officially fancy. 
but for the first 40 years of my life almost that I was not a contributor to public broadcasting and the little like thanks viewers like you I would always send like a big thank you out to all the viewers like not me who were supporting public broadcasting so that's what you're doing right now but that was all to say I apologize I forgot to send out the credits at the end of last week's episode failure so I will do it this time right so many things in my brain ping pong machine Bing. so this week okay so this week I will talk about sewing so if you don't want to talk about sewing I get it just fast forwardy. maybe I'll remember to put in a timestamp. I don't know if I will but um and then I'm going to talk about a little bit about washing fleece not a lot just a little bit because I washed some fleece because maybe I accidentally bought a fleece at, at uh, the wool event let me talk about that for a second <laughs> I went to the wool event in Greencastle, Indiana, um, last weekend before last, and I went on Saturday and it was forecast to be rainy all day. Well, of course, this is the first year I've ever been brave enough to be like, let's do a meetup there because it's a, it's a small event, like, right? It's not like a huge, like numbers event. So I know there's not gonna be very many people who watch the podcast there, but I thought there might be a few and there were, and we totally hijacked the 4-H barn and knit in it. Classy. All of Bloomington came. Thanks, Bloomington, Indiana. <laughs> we totally just set up camp chairs and sat around and knit for like two or three hours. And it was so pleasant. Some folks floated in and out. Some people stayed for the whole shebang. It was awesome. So thank you so much to the folks who came and sat and knit. It was great. Um, I need to do that more often. So I'm planning to do it more often in the future. Maybe I'll be able to be brave enough to do it at the um, the Yellow Springs event that comes like later-ish in the season. It's like fall-ish almost, like september I think. And what's it called? The Wool Gathering in Yellow Springs at Young's Dairy Farm. Because hello, cinnamon ice cream. I'm just saying. So maybe I'll be brave enough to do it there. I don't know. We'll see. But yeah, we full-on... Like there was a 4-H barn that was not in use by festival goers. Like it was not like there were vendors there or anything because that would be super unkosher. But it was like just this open and it's an open barn. So it's not like we had to like sneak in a door or anything. It was an open barn with like some picnic tables and like some weird stuff all stacked. There was a lot of raccoon poop. Whatever. It wasn't on us. It wasn't in our area. It was just evidence the wildlife is thriving there in Greencastle, Indiana. We are not the only people co-opting the 4-H barn for our own uses. Just saying, well, we're the only people, but not the only living creatures. Just saying. At one point, we did get a drive-by, like a roll-by by the sheriff, and I really thought we were going to get busted. <laughs> I mean, we're not doing anything bad. We're just sitting and knitting, right? Not harming anything. I didn't change anything. I didn't do it. I just sat up our chairs. But he did drive by real slow. <laughs> and I was like, you know what? If I have to go to jail for something, this would be it. Like, that would be exciting, at least. I mean, I wouldn't have to call for bail, but whatever. At least, like, that would be knitting props. Like, I might have to get a prison tattoo on that one. I know it wouldn't be actual prison, but come on, it's a stretch. <laughs> So that was super fun. And I bought a few things. Oh, what am I thinking? I should show you what I brought. Okay, just a second, I'll be right back. Okay. So let me first off show you, I got gifties and I have to show you because they're so cute. The Bloomington Knitters of Awesomeness, many of them, okay, three of them. Look at how precious they are. Are they not the most precious things ever? Oh my gosh, I die. I die. Can you see the tiny leaf and the tiny stem? Camera, don't love me so much. Love the apple. Right. What is happening? Oh, fuck. I think I might have turned off the autofocus. And then, 
Okay, that was not the only gift. Bloomington Knitters, so wonderful. Also, Seven Autumn Fives Mom. Squirrel bag. Full on, like, real tree level squirrel camo. It's not really camo, but if I was in a herd of squirrels, it would be. How cute is that? Do you die of how cute that is? I'm sorry, you're dead. I apologize. But then I bought, from Leading Him In Fiber Arts, I really love their DK so much, it's ridiculous. Um, it's 100% superwash, and it's a bonus, a bonus skein. It's 115 grams, so it ends up being 250 yards, and it's perfect for the Ricky hat. Because a regular skein for the Ricky hat, I tend to kind of run out and make it a little bit shorter, but these little, like, chunk, these little bonus skeins, I get a full slouchy Ricky hat out of. And, like, that color, it's blue steel, right? Yeah, blue steel. But then everything else I bought, I've already started to use. It's like I'm a saint. I don't know what you're talking about. It's true. This? Oh yeah, that's right. I bought two bats from Knit Spin Farm in her mod colorway. These were Coriadale Shetland Silk, Silk Noel Tarhi. And I spun this up, literally started as soon as I got home. That's not true. I ate something and I peed, and then I started. So unfortunately I've turned off the autofocus, I can't show that to you, but what? Maybe I didn't really turn it off, I probably did. Let's see. I didn't turn it off, I'm a genius. Right. So I just wanted it to be super fluffy and just haphazard and wonderful because look at that orange, y'all. Oh, aren't you jealous? I mean, come on, look at that. Oh. Right? So that happened. I don't know what this will be. I'm thinking maybe a Quaker yarn stretcher or one of those boomerangy style sh sh scarves, scarves, shawl scarves. Sharves. That sounds a little bit like shiv, but sharves sounds maybe a little bit like shart. PG-13 by accident. But right. Come on. By the way, I totally went to Nits Ben Farm's house on Friday night, and I got to see all the baby goats. Dude, charmed life. So there's that. Did I say that it's 300 yards? So it's like a worst to de weight. So there's that. Then also I purchased from Knit Spin Farm a skein of her self striping. She now has Tarhi sport and Tarhi fingering. And I'm not gonna lie. I bought this for you. You're not getting it. Sorry. Okay, I thought I would buy this for you, but really by the time I bought it, I knew it wasn't for you. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I was like, I already have a skein of self-striping from um, Knit Spin Farm. I should not hoard them all. And then I was like, who am I kidding? Dragon. So this is her rad-ish colorway. It's all radishes, y'all. got a potato one. Bam. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me with that? Of course I bought it. What are you talking about? I'm supporting local commerce. <laughs> How fun is that? So this is on my 72 stitch socks. So your stock, your stocks, your socks will probably have slightly fatter stripes if you are not a super fat hobbit foot lady like me solidarity y'all. Actually I'm really not even a hobbit foot. I'm just like a my husband's at his Fred Flintstone feet. Probably pretty accurate. 
they're basically just bricks. <laughs> it does make sh shaping socks quite simple. So yeah, isn't that cute? These are the Chowgu double zeros that are fixed. They're not the like mini interchangeables. I highly endorse them if you're a double zero knitter. I enjoy them quite a lot. I in fact like them more than the interchangeables because the cable seems, it might just be my imagination, but the cable seems slightly firmer, which I enjoy. I like a firm cable. Um, and so I like it a little bit more than the, the minis. Enjoyable. So that happened. Okay, this is all I got. I did knit this in like a day and a half and I've not knit any more on it since, but <laughs> I'm such a bad sock knitter. <sighs> Can't help it. It's who I am. And then, okay, so that's all, right? That's reasonable. And then it gets unreasonable. <laughs> so, remember how Sonia had fleece? And then, like, I was going to go there. And in my head, I was like, did you buy anything you want? So there's no fleece. Mm. Oops. Really, I need a handler. I think I've said this before. I need a handler. <laughs> I have no business buying a fleece. But I don't have a gray fleece. And then there was this thing. Are you ready? Now, I will tell you, this cute little couple, they do not have a website. So I'm not going to tell you who they are because, like, you're good luck. <clears throat> They may in fact be like Mennonite or like New Order Amish or something. Anyway, they don't have a website. They only took cash. I actually, see this is the thing, right? I can't even blame my poor impulse control because quite frankly, I left the festival to go to an ATM because I did not have enough cash. So I can't even blame impulse control. But in my defense, I had already asked them to hold it for me while I went to go find money. <laughs> So I couldn't just leave them hanging. That would be terrible and live way on my conscience forever and probably cause me an early death. So this was for my health, quite frankly. I'm just saying. I'm only showing you this much of it because I've washed the rest of it. But like, I did save this to show you. Come on. This is a CVM, which is California Variegated Mutant which is also named as Rommeldale. And sh it's a she, I left the card that had her name on it. They totally put her name on it with something really cute. S S no, what's that orange juice and champagne drink? Mimosa. Right? As I said, it was for my health. It was preventative health care. I should be able to write this off, no problems. So it was coated, it was super clean, it looked like this, and it was fairly reasonable. It's $20 a pound, which for a coated fleece, I think is totally a good price, quite frankly. Especially when you can see it and know that it's nice. There were very minimal second cuts. I could not tell that there were any second cuts when I just looked at it in the bag, which I feel like is pretty much, unless there are a lot of second cuts, I can't tell right off the bat. Um, and if you don't know what a second cut is, that's just like, okay, so say I'm the sheep. And the shearer comes in and he gets right against my, she gets right against my skin. That's a great cut. But if she comes in and kind of like, cuts and then there's still a little bit of fleece left and she has to go over that little bit of fleece is a second cut and it's a twofold problem that little bit of fleece will cause you to have neps in your wool if that bothers you um which it does a little bit not terrible um but it will also then decrease the staple length of that other part so you'll have slightly more variation in your staple length which is also not a huge problem but it's something to be aware of and it's not something i would pay a prime fee for if there were lots of second cuts. This had very minimal second cuts and it was quite clear after washing it because after I washed it, here I'll show you. Here's a bag of it washed. It was, did I say it was 25 pounds? So I washed it and I just washed it in 
I didn't do the fancy washing. I just washed it in because I just want to make a bat. I just want to card this wool and make a very lofty sweater with it, I think. What was I saying? Okay, so I just washed it in these. I just washed it in my kitchen sink. I was able to fit all three pounds of it in my kitchen sink. I do have, um, I don't have a fancy sink, but like I have, you know, like have your normal sink is two basins. My sink is like a one and a half and a half basin, or maybe even one and two thirds of a third basin. So like one of my basins is really small and the other one is quite larger, quite a bit larger. So I was able to fit all three pounds of it into my sink with no problemos. So I just washed it. I did wash it in power scour because I had some handy and it was convenient. This was not a very greasy sheep at all. I could definitely have spun it um, in the grease even. It was nice. But I just, again, I wanted um, a woolen preparation. I wanted a carded preparation for this because I want it to be nice. I'm thinking I might do like a bulkier sweater with it. So I want it to be very airy and light and not. Because again, a bulky sweater for my size can weigh pounds, right? So here it is after it's washed. And I just went through and kind of broke it up a little bit like this. And I was not, I was very brutish when I washed it. I was not at all ginger with it. So, um, but so when I did that, that's when I found the little bit, the little bits of second cuts. Um, cause they just kind of, they kind of felt up on each other cause they're such little bits. They just kind of like glom onto each other and you get these little like nuggets in your wool. Um, and you can imagine that as you're carding it or spinning it, those will probably stay together. And therefore when you're spinning, you're going to get little neppy bits in your yarn, which is not a terrible thing, but it's something to be aware of. Um, so yeah, gosh, I'm just having another moment with this fleece right now. It's so enjoyable. So when I was doing that, I found a few little second cuts, but very minimal, not problematic at all. See, here's one. That's what I was looking for. See, it kind of just like comes in this little, like, what is that? And that's the second cut. But you can find most of them as you're breaking apart your wool. And I'll probably do another as I'm carding it. <laughs> um, that's also something you would use a wool picker for if you um, have seen those before. They're like the crazy medieval looking like with nails and stuff. They make them in two forms. There's what's called a swinging maiden, which is the which is what I would really love to have. But it's a space issue, right? It's like a cost issue because they're not they're not inexpensive. But it's also a space issue. They have a pretty big footprint. And let's face it, you're not going to use them all that often unless you're primarily processing fleeces. So this works just fine. But I will tell you, watching videos of people use them is very exciting. Because it's just like you put the wool in and it's all kind of bunched up from being washed. And then they swing this arm and it comes at the other end like all super fluffy cloud style. It's very exciting. They also make bench ones, which is like a box. And I even have plans to like for making one, which I really want to do because you can make one for like 30 bucks. But I have to go and like borrow somebody's router. We don't have a router. Anyway, I'm just talking out of my nose at this point. Hmm. <laughs> so that's the other thing I purchased at, at the fiber event. Now I'm going to Maryland. I'm, I don't think I'm going to have a problem with buying a fleece. Because I'm taking a non-knitter friend. Like, she knows how to knit, but she is not a capital K knitter. And we're only going to be there on Saturday. And we have not seen each other in literally years. That's embarrassing to even say. We used to live together. Um, so it's going to be super bestie catch-up time. And then, so I'm, I'm thinking I'll be okay. Although I might be so distracted that I just accidentally buy another one. I'm going to have to warn her ahead of time. She'll be good. She'll be like, no. She's hardcore. That's it. She's my handler. Okay. But she also wants me to be happy, so it could be a danger. I'll have to explain to her <laughs> that my long-term happiness it, it relies on me not buying another fleece. <laughs> so that was the fiber event. It was lovely. It was so nice to see so many of you. I'm sorry I missed some of you, but I'm also really glad we didn't get taken down by the popo.
they're kind of sad too. <laughs> okay. So then let's talk about sewing shenanigans. Remember how I said we were going to talk about that like 10 minutes ago? Okay. So this last weekend was all about the sewing. Okay. I've had this pattern by Cashmere in my possession for a while now. And the reason I like the thought of this pattern is that it goes up to a size 28, which is about what my size is. And it's adjustable for bust size. So see how form fitting it is in the bust. It has both a side bust pleat and an under bust pleat. Maybe you can see that better on the back. Um, but because of that, well, not because of that, because so many don't. But this company is um, committed to trying to offer uh, options for busty women. So this pattern comes in sizes 12 through 28. That's U.S. sizes. Um, I don't know what the European sizes are. I'm sorry. It's bust sizes 40 to 58. Does that help? Okay. Um, but it also comes in cus cup sizes. So there are actually different pattern pieces for whether you're a CD, an EF, or a GH cup. So for example, the size, let's just say 28, can be anywhere from a 56 inch bust to a 58 inch bust. Love it. How much do you love that? However, I don't really love the style of this pattern. It's a little bit, up, it's called the Upton dress, did I say that? It's a little bit fancy for me, I gotta be honest with you. But it requires no modifications for me to do it. So that is the bonus. Then, <laughs> there's this dress pattern. Um, this is the Painted Portrait Dress by Anna Marina Horner. And I love it. Now, I did really examine my motivations, right? Am I like, am I just in love with this? Because I think when I wear it, I'm going to be this cute little lady on the front. I don't think that's it because I also think these ladies are wicked cute, right? So don't think it's that. I do think, however, are you with me? It is full on a hybrid house dress and apron. Do you see it? And do you see the giant pocket? What? <gasps> right. It's like, house dress and an apron had a baby and made you a dress but it only fits you if you're a tiny human so while this pattern starts at size 40 bust this size in this pattern ends at size 40 bust now if the average American I think is a 14 a woman unless they've changed it that's only getting bigger <laughs> So according to that, that's a 42 inch bust for the average American. This one doesn't even go up to that size. And yet I bought it because I'm a sucker. And it was not inexpensive, $17. Sorry, am I screaming at you? I am. I feel passionately about this. What is going on sewing companies? The knitting people have it figured out. I understand it's a little bit different, right? I understand. But come flipping on. I don't expect every pattern to come up to my size. No, no, I don't. I really don't. But 40? That's not even close to the average American woman's bus size. What? So that is a disappointing. Now, Part of me is like, okay, so like when you're doing a sweater and pattern, sometimes when it's upscaled, like the thing that you liked about it, which is like some sort of design element, I'm thinking immediately of there was a sweater pattern or is that has like a little pleat right here and it's super cute. But it appears that the pleat is the same, now I don't know this definitively, but it appears that this design element is like the same size or the same width for a size small and a size like triple X, right? So when you put that element on a triple X woman, it looks like it's floating in space, right? It's not, it might be graded up, but it's not graded up enough in my opinion, my opinion. Okay, so I get it. Like it is difficult to grade patterns. It's not like a wicked easy thing to do. And there are some design elements that don't grade well. For example, in this pattern, 
This is a side panel. 